So when we recognize the disparities in uh, life expectancy or childhood mor morbidity uh, between r wealthy and developing countries, uh, it allows us to actually focus on what we can do to create healthier environments that will um, reduce the rate of uh, premature death uh, uh, among children. Um, and, and here I want to go to uh, the really extraordinary work of the Gates Foundation uh, uh, on world health issues and talk about some of the things they've been doing uh, and some of the work they've inspired uh, or supported directly um, to create environments in developing countries that reduce vulnerability. We're not really talking about, um, in most cases, uh, a cure that's just going to wipe a disease out. That does, has happened, and, 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 does, and thank goodness, and it's, it's such an important achievement. But um, for what I'm talking about mostly here are, are interventions that significantly reduce vulnerability, which means that uh, in a given population, uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands, then millions of lives change uh, as uh, children live uh, into adolescence and adulthood who had uh, a significant percentage of whom would have died had those, those interventions not taken place. Here are some of the most important uh, areas where interventions um, uh, in developing countries uh, can and are making uh, a, a huge difference. Uh, one is in gastrointestinal and diarrheal diseases. Uh, these are major causes of death, especially among children. Um, Nearly one million children under age five die every year from these uh, gastrointestinal diseases. Those who survive are often uh, marked for life by uh, their experience of disease in their uh, first years. These are diseases that are, 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 are spread through uh, uh, either poor sanitation, uh, uh, lack of clean water, um, uh, open uh, uh, sewers or uh, op open toilets. Uh, we've, we've, we've encountered these issues before um, in the uh, uh, section of our course on extreme poverty. This is a place where we know how to make a difference. Uh, education matters, uh, clean water matters enormously. Um, getting people access to proper sanitation uh, is uh, one of the most important things we can do to reduce the incidence of these kinds of uh, uh, stomach disorders, diarrheal disorders uh, um, that uh, afflict uh, uh, the very poor. I, I don't know, as a mother, I think the worst thing that you can ever curse a person with is to lose your child. And when you think about something that you could have prevented at any point, I think that's the worst thing that, that's the worst feeling that you can ever have, that you could have prevented. You could have done something about it and you didn't. And that, that's the kind of guilt that you live with all your life. And um, I would never want anybody to uh, be cursed with that. Help a child reach five, is, um, is, a, is a movement that we've started in India. And uh, we want to spread it out and we want people to hear about what we, that we want every child to reach the age of five. It shouldn't be only about, I mean, there, there are lots of things that we can't control. There are lots of, um, you know, there are earthquakes, there are tsunamis, there are lots of natural disasters that we cannot do anything about. But when you think about the, the statistics that you have in front of you, that the children die of diarrhea and pneumonia every day. Once, one child every 15 seconds dies due to just diarrhea and pneumonia. Things that we can control, things that we can prevent. If we just simply spread this message of, you know, washing your hands, just hygiene, keep it clean. I think that would make such a huge difference. And if I save even one life today of one child, I think that... I think we will have made a fabulous, fabulous difference. I think our mission is successful. Lifeboy has started, Lifeboy has adopted a village in Madhya Pradesh in India, which is, um, it has got the highest uh, rate of child mortality in India. And uh, they have worked at it over there to teach each and every child to wash their hands with soap and taught them the, the, the meaning of what it does for you and how it changes your life. 
And yes, it's not going to change your life in one day, but it is going to change your life eventually. And there's this little boy over there called Mayank, and he's wonderful because uh, he came up and he was like, he's the ambassador of hand washing for, yeah, for Tez Gora. I, th I thought it was wonderful. And he came up to me and he was like, he talked about how important hand washing was to him. And when you look at him, you know for a fact that what we have done is we have taught one child how important hand washing is. And because that child has learned it in school and knows the reason why it's so important, he's going to grow up, he's going to teach his kids, and he's going to make this cycle of health. And it's going to continue and it's going to grow. And that state, hopefully that village, will never be the same again. The rate will come down. The child mortality rate in that village especially will come down because of this one particular thing, just a simple cost-effective measure to saving a child's life just by simply washing your hands with soap. And, you know, I, I just thought it was so silly. It was just so silly that, it was just so silly that we had children dying because we just didn't have the, we just, people didn't know whether they, uh, people didn't know that they should have a proper, hy have proper hygiene in place and that they should, you know, wash their hands and they, they, sh they were able to teach this to other people as well. It's not only about you, it's about spreading the message, it's about telling everybody around you to your, how important it is from the smallest person to the biggest person. And uh, I urge all the, I know this is the UN week and uh, it's a wonderful place to be in right now. And I want to urge all the policymakers that hand washing is, to my way of thinking, small, but yes, the most effective and first step in basic hygiene. And therefore, I think it should be definitely included in, uh, you know, even in the post-2015 agenda, as well as now, today. I think it's a message that we need to spread, that we need to include in each and every agenda that we have, for that matter. It affects everything. It's not only one small thing by itself. It definitely affects everything that we have, that we, all the Millennium Development Goals, in fact, it affects everything. So I think um, we definitely should be, you know, focusing on it. And it's a small but little habit that we should change in ourselves. And I would really, I would really like it if all of y'all could just go out there and spread the message. Lifeboy has, um, Lifeboy will contribute as much as you contribute. And, you know, as many uh, YouTube videos as you share, Lifeboy will contribute for that as well. So it's, it's a small but really strong and powerful message. And I really hope all of y'all can, you know, all of y'all can spread it with me. Just to give you a, uh, just a, somebody told me this line yesterday and I, I couldn't get it out of my head actually. I had tears in my eyes at the end of it. Imagine the scope of two million children dying every year but it, uh, it's, a, it's a statistic that you don't really understand. But imagine 40 Boeing 747s filled with children crashing day after day. That's what you're looking at. And that's where we are headed with this. We want to stop that. That's the step that we want to take and stop. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, I have taken a step. As a celebrity and as a, as a mother, I have taken a step to prove that, yes, I want to do something about this, which is why I'm standing here today. But also, we've, uh, we've also made a video for it, which also I would like to share with you. We love our children so much, 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 he just got loose motions. And I'm like, ah, it's only diarrhea. But it's not only diarrhea. I saw recently a video on YouTube. Gundappa's story. This is the first child of Gundappa, who has reached the age of 5 years. Gundappa has given his child. Just because of diarrhea. It's stupid. It's silly. What is this? What is the answer to this problem? What is the answer to this question? The answer is that you only have to change a small habit. सिर्फ खाने से पहले हाथ साबुन से धोइए और बाथरूम जाने के बाद हाथ साबुन से धोइए। YouTube पर टाइप कीजिए हेल्प अ चाइल्ड रीच फाइव गुंडप्पा की कहानी देखिए दिखाइए आप डोनेट भी कर सकते हैं जितना आप देंगे उतना ही लाइफ बॉय भी देगा ये भी नहीं है कि एक 
या दो की बात कर रहे हैं हम बीस लाख पांच साल की उम्र से कम बच्चे हर साल मरते हैं सो कैन यू प्लीज हेल्प अ चाइल्ड रीच फाइव Another disease that we have gotten under control uh, in much of the developed world, but still is wrecking havoc in much of the developing world, is HIV/AIDS. Um, more than 33 million people around the world are currently living uh, with immunodeficiency disease. Uh, And more than 30 million people have died from HIV and its complications uh, since the 1980s. More than 30 million have died. More than 33 million uh, are today living with the disease. This is a, this is a story here of of great tragedy, of great sorrow, and of of uh, shock. Uh, those of you who are uh, like myself, old enough to have lived through this period, with the discovery of the disease and 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 uh, the experience of seeing uh, friends and loved ones uh, uh, succumb to it, uh, remember a time uh, of, of 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 real panic uh, around uh, HIV/AIDS, uh, and and that in a in a relatively short period of time, uh, uh, the World Health Community. Has managed to create the drug regimen to um, allow people to continue to live with HIV/AIDS uh, rather than to uh, be on a very, very steep decline uh, to, to death. Um, however, the work in this regard was not just science, right? It was politics. It was it was certainly science trying to understand the disease, trying to understand how it was transmitted, and then trying to understand what we could do to control its symptoms. Very important, basic, and then uh, applied in translational science. Uh, but to fast track that science was not just uh, um, the work of of people in their in their labs. It was the work of uh, of uh, activists and the work of citizens who. Who uh, pushed governments and their scientific uh, communities to do more about AIDS, to make HIV/AIDS a priority in the research stream, and then once the research stream was uh, proven to be effective, to try to get those drugs in the hands of the people who needed them most. And there were great debates, and there are still debates about how best to get the drugs to the people who need them the most, uh, and. Uh, uh, it's an ongoing uh, struggle to find ways to get the drugs to uh, people, especially in developing countries who don't have access to regular health care and who certainly can't afford to pay uh, what had been called market rates for these drugs uh, in the past. And, and you know, the world community has responded um, uh, and needs to continue to respond. Um, because there are newly infected people with AIDS uh, uh, all the time, and uh, the, it's very important to educate uh, men and women uh, about the dangers of unprotected sex, um, about the dangers of uh, tr uh, uh, transmission through um, uh, uh, hypodermic needles, and 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 the, the dangers of this uh, contagious. Uh, disease. It's very important for people to know how to protect themselves, um, and and it, and then, and then it's very important to get the drugs to the people who need them, regardless of their ability to pay. And that's that's a that's a political issue as well as a a, um, a design and uh, delivery issue. Um, Uh, one of the dangers about HIV/AIDS today is, as, as, as uh, you will be hearing as we talk about global health cha challenges, is that because the science progressed so quickly or relatively quickly, um, there is the danger of complacency. That is, there is the danger of thinking that AIDS, um, since it is a, a chronic disease, people live with it for a long time, um, is uh, less on the minds of people uh, who. Are at risk for transmission, and so um, uh, the failure to protect oneself uh, and the failure to protect one's uh, 
uh, friends and lovers, um, uh, uh, can, can, be, can arise out of a false sense of security. Uh, AIDS is a horrific disease. Um, it wrecks havoc in one's life and the life of, uh, lives of, uh, of those around you. Uh, and, and, um, and it can be uh, prevented. Uh, you can reduce uh, the in- incidence of uh, infection and you can live with AIDS uh, if we can get the drugs in the hands of people who need those drugs the most. Thank you, Congresswoman Barbara Lee and Executive Director Mark Diebold. Thank you so much. So let's just jump right in. Why are you so excited about eliminating, and how can we? Can we eliminate AIDS in the next 10 years? Oh, eliminate in the next 10 years might be a bit much. Um, But what's really cool right now is um, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when when the Congresswoman and a whole bunch of other people decided that we were going to take on AIDS, and TB and malaria, by the way, the best we could do is really just get in and stop dying, which is pretty good. Uh, you know, there were millions of people dying. Uh, what you would see in Africa, and you just heard a little bit about it, is breathtakingly sad. Um, uh, made what was happening in San Francisco and New York look literally like a microcosm. I mean, there were people, communities were, were funerals, basically. So we had to get in and stop the dying. But science advanced a lot while we were doing that. So over the last literally two years, uh, we've had so much scientific advance that we can actually see the end of this epidemic. End of the epidemic. That doesn't mean no more AIDS cases. That means taking a very efficient epidemic down to to be a wonky epidemiologist, low-level endemicity. Uh, But what that means is ending as a public health threat where your kids, we don't have to go out and worry that there are enough infected people that you're at high risk. So it's ending the epidemic. And it's a mix of the science, but sometimes you have science and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, Because of the last 10 years, because of the massive investment of billions of dollars, because of the response of African leaders and people on the ground and in the communities, and because of the support of people like Congresswoman Lee, we have the experience to take that science and go village by village and see how we end this epidemic. And what it means is focusing where the epidemic is highly transmitting, get the interventions to people, and what it really means this is so cool. I mean, we can end the modern-day black peg, but we have, the only way to do it is by changing the human family, um, by welcoming everyone into the human family, because who's most at risk right now? Well, it's young women, it's gay men, and transgen- people are transgender, it's people who inject drugs, it's prisoners, it's the people left behind by society, sex workers, whether you're in Washington, D.C., or you're in Africa. So to get to these people, to, to, to welcome them, to bring them in, to the human family where they belong is the only way to do it. We've got to get past the health clinics into the community. We've got to welcome them, make them feel at home, make them feel like they are who they are, which is part of us, and change the human family to be what it is inclusive. So we get to end a plague, and we get to overcome uh, the way we've treated each other as human beings into something new and exciting. That's pretty, pretty cool. You don't get to do that many times in a lifetime. And again, we couldn't have said any of that two years ago. We can say it today. And all of us in this room can actually make that happen, and that's pretty cool. That is awesome. You don't get to do this stuff very much in a lifetime, and we have that opportunity. And how can we do that? Well, we need support, for one, uh, resources. But what we really need is people to understand, you know, movements change the world. Ideas actually do change the world. We need people to understand that this isn't any more about getting people in treatment only or getting condoms out. It's actually about ending an epidemic. And when you think that way, you start doing things differently. You start dedicating your resource. You find out where the most infections are. You find out who's most at risk. You get them the services. You bring them in. And then we all collectively and globally make a movement out of that and make everyone do it. Because it's a tough time. You know, it's not, not an easy financial time, as the congresswoman will probably talk about. Um, but, you know, too bad. You know, diseases don't follow financial cycles. Um, And so we need to get in and all get people like Congresswoman Lee, who doesn't need anyone to tell her she needs to do this, but she needs to have the support to be able to do it. And we need the same thing in Africa. We need people in Africa to do what advocates in this country did, drive their governments to increase their commitments, which we're seeing. What's happening in Africa in the last 10 years is breathtaking. The leaders are on it. They are on it. But they need the resources, and so we need advocates there to be pushing for the resources, and we need people to be pushing to say, hey, we need to let everyone into our human family because that's where they belong, and that's not going to happen by governments. Governments don't do that. People do that. 
So we need a people movement to end this epidemic, and we all need to get in game. Congresswoman, what can sure. we do? Well, I, I am confident that uh, we will see an AIDS-free generation in, in our lifetime, mm -hmm. but it's going to take exactly what Mark just laid out. First, we you know we have the scientific um, information. There's mu been much progress on the scientific front, but we also need um, the resources. And as one who helped create the framework for the Global Fund, one of the uh, big pieces of this is ensuring that uh, we have the leveraging ability in terms of governments and private sec the private sector to be able to get to the, what is it, 15 billion now for the next three years. This morning, for example, uh, the United Kingdom announced uh, a one billion pound commitment to the Global Fund, which is significant. I mean, it's, it's awesome what, the, what happened. And I'm encouraging other countries to do the same. Uh, the United States, as an appropriator, once again, and Mark mentioned the challenge in economic times that our country is in, uh, but we've got to get to, and I'm fighting for a, a five billion commitment over the next three years because we have to have our commitment in order to leverage uh, the resources that are desperately needed. I uh, have been visiting Sub-Saharan Africa for many years, and how many people do we have now in treatment? Maybe six million or so. It's over eight I now. Mean, eight million. I mean, that, that's, we, we've saved a lot of lives, thanks to you. But we have a long way to go. And so I'm so pleased that uh, Mark now is the director of the Global Fund because um, he gets it. He was here when all of this started in terms of the U.S. response. And we have to make sure that uh, the progress continues, that we don't turn back. And um, when I started going to, to Africa on HIV AIDS missions to look at what African countries needed from the United States, I remember seeing uh, more funerals that I want to even mention. The coffin making business was Especially babies big business. and children. You know, and children. Yes. And so now we're seeing uh, lives being saved as a result of, of treatment and antiretroviral drugs and, and all of the uh, comprehensive services that are needed. A couple of things we have to do though. One is the stigmatization and discrimination. I serve on the um, UN Commission on HIV and the Law. We held hearings around the world and, you know, learned about the very discriminatory laws that uh, are in place all over the world, including in the United States. I'm working now to get the 36 states which have these laws on the books uh, repealed because these laws were passed during times when we did not know how to treat HIV and AIDS and what to do for prevention, care, and treatment. And so stigma, removing the stigma, making sure that everyone, targeted populations, people who have been marginalized, making sure that, that they understand and that we understand that they're part of the human family and they too deserve the type of, type of um, attention, services, and treatment. And then I think we will see this AIDS-free generation if we make and rededicate ourselves to the resources, to the targeting of the resources, and to ensure that civil society continues to be engaged in the work that we have to do. Thank you. We have one minute each on this one, and we have Annie Lennox on the current issue and really heartbreaking but hopeful pictures of how affordable it is to actually treat people now, even in comparison to a few years ago. What can everybody in the audience, what can we do right now, what can people listening, what can we do to actually, it's something that's immediate that we could all do to, to be involved in this, to make a difference so it's not this huge problem with, with no solution, so we kind of feel overwhelmed with that. So what's something one minute to go. <laughs> what can we do? Get in the game. I mean, that, that's, that's it. You got to get in the game. I mean, the, we can end this, this epidemic as an epidemic, and, and it's really about hope. And, you know, the congresswoman, you know, and we've been talking about what's changed in the country. What's fundamentally changed in these countries is they have hope. Uh, people in villages were literally losing their entire families. Um, there are orphan run villages because there was no one left. And, you know, when, you, when that's your life, why would you go to school? Why would you think about you know, getting a job or going to work? You think you're going to die. You think everyone around is going to die. Hope is there now. So what people need to know is that they're going to be sustained in this hope, that they're going to get through it. So it's really building the movement. So concretely, let your members know that you believe in this stuff. Let people know that you care. Get online. Get everyone. This has to be a movement, and we've got to do it differently. It can't be a bunch of people sitting around in conference rooms. Yes. It's not going to work. Global movements and ideas change the world. People sitting in a conference room generally mess it up. 
So get out there and get in the game. Uh, and everyone can do it, whether you go volunteer, whether you write to congressman or, or senator, whether you demonstrate, whether you go over and, and, and help people directly. Whatever you do, you got to get in the game. And it's personal responsibility. If you tell everyone you know to get in the game, they'll get in the game. If you get engaged and protect yourself and tell other people to protect themselves, we're not free in this country either. Mm -hmm. Get in the game personally, feel like you own it, believe in that hope, believe in the idea, believe in the movement, believe we can end the epidemic, and we will. Okay, Congresswoman Lee. Sure. One, one of the things I think we can do immediately is make sure that uh, civil society, uh, people throughout the world, get very engaged with their members of Congress and parliamentarians and tell them they have to have courage and take bold leadership in terms of priorities. Given the um, very limited resources, this has got to be a priority. And so I believe, I know, I hear from my constituents each and every day uh, from the 13th Congressional District, and I know they know that we're going to fight the good fight, but I think more members of Congress and parliamentarians need to hear from their constituents that this is important. This is about saving lives. This is about also global security and peace. This is about poverty elimination. This is about really enhancing the quality of life and providing for the quality of life for people throughout the world. And we have to ensure that those voices and those populations which heretofore have been discriminated against and marginalized, make sure they have a seat at the table and make sure they know that they're part of this movement because until we're unified around this, it, it will be fragmented. But I think there's a lot of progress and so we need to get have an action plan leaving this week to go back home and, and get engaged politically and hold elected officials accountable to support what we're doing. One thing you can do today is tweet in Facebook, the UK, yeah. one billion pounds which right now is $1.65 billion. That's huge. They should be thanked for that. And encourage everyone else to get in the game and do the same thing. And encourage your friends and everyone else to, to get involved and support all this. Any websites very quickly that you recommend? www.theglobalfund.com. <laughs> That's it. Dot org. Sorry. That's the one. Dot org. All right, thanks so much for joining. Okay, thank you. <laughs>